Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today, we're in Anaheim, California at Backstreet Brewing. It's literally right down the street from where I live and I've never been here before. I'm really excited to try some new beers and see what they have to offer. Let's have some beer. So I wanted to give a little background on Backstreet Brewing. So I looked up their story and basically they started in 1998 inside the back of the well-known pizza chain in Orange County called Lamp Post Pizza. Over several years they grew in popularity and eventually they ended up opening their own tasting rooms and breweries all over Orange County. After several years of growing in popularity they finally opened up this tasting room in Anaheim. 2015. So now we're getting ready to try some of their beers. All right, so first up is the Vienna Lager. This is a Vienna style beer. It rings in at 5%, so it's a lighter beer. I wanted to start light and then go dark. So this is the first one. Let's see how it is. Cheers. This is really, really tasty. It's extremely light but the body in itself, you get all the flavors of the malts and the grains in there. It's, I'm not sure if it's just that it's dark out here, but it's actually a little bit darker of a color than your typical lager is. And at 5%, it's extremely smooth. All right, so next up we have their Roasted Pale Ale. So it comes in at 5.5%. Looks a little bit dark, not as dark as you would normally expect for an IPA. But we'll try it. Okay, so what I'm getting here, it's a good pale ale. It's not as strong as an IPA, first off the bat. But you are getting a little bit of those toasty notes, probably from the roasting and the barley that they're using in the drink. It's it's well rounded, it's a little bit dark. You have a long finish with this beer, but overall a very tasty beer that you want to drink ah, at the beginning of your night before you get too sloshed. Okay, so next up we have their Party Blonde Ale. This rings in at 5% again, and a typical blonde. Very clear, very light. Looks good. Let's try it. Slancha. This is an absolutely party beer. This is one of those ones you want to crack open out of the cooler, just take a big bottle of it, and just walk around the party and talk to everybody. You're not getting a lot of big, thick notes, and you're not getting a lot of hops, you're not getting a lot of body but it's good, crisp, clean, and it has enough body to get you through where you're thinking, I'm drinking a really good beer. That's what this party bond's all about. The next beer up is Perky's Pale Ale. I really like the name, so I was really interested to try it out. And as you guys know, I like my pale beers. This one measures in at 5.4%, so we'll see how it tastes. If you're not a fan of the super bitter IPAs, this is a great go-to. It's got a really light straw color, which could be deceiving to many because it does have a hoppy body, but it's not overly bitter. The finish on this is quite tasty. It does linger with you a little bit, so it is sticking on the tongue, but I'm pretty sure that I'm not minding it one bit. So this next beer is a Belgian white IPA. I love Belgian beers, and I don't think I've ever had a Belgian white IPA before. It's got a really cloudy color, kind of reminds me of a Belgian style wit beer by the looks of it, but we don't know how it tastes yet, so let's find out. And sure enough, this actually tastes like a hoppy Belgian wit style beer. I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't classify this in the IPA realm. This would actually go in its own category. You do get the hoppy bitter notes, but for me, I'm getting all the Belgian style flavors in there. The wheat, 
and grain flavors. Um, it's a lot heavier of a beer. I like that. Um, not sure if I really like the hops in there. I kind of wish they omitted that and just left it as it is. But all in all, still a good beer, totally drinkable. All right guys, the next beer I'm gonna try is their Heritage Hefeweizen. It rings in at 5%. It's that normal cloudy, typical cloudy Hefeweizen that you're expecting. But how does it taste? Let's find out. Cheers. Wow. Okay, first off the bat, it's it, it's really light. It's not it's five percent, so you're not getting a big punch in the mouth that kind of thing that you're getting with an IPA. It's a Hefeweizen, so with this, you're getting a lot of those good Hefeweizen flavors. So think Blue Blue Moon, think Hangar Twenty Four and Julie if you drink it. it. You're getting all those good orangey, fruity notes, a little bit of floral notes. But it's overall a very drinkable beer, a very easy beer to go, go down, and it's a great beer to introduce people to craft beers with. I like it. So my next beer is a dark one. It's called Sexy Sadie Stout. Try saying that five times fast. This measures in at a 5.9%. This is the only stout I see on the menu, and I'm a big fan of stouts, so let's see how they did. Oh, I've been waiting for a beer like this here. This is fantastic. You get like the burnt caramel and toffee notes in there. You even pick it up on the aroma. A little bit of coffee in there as well. But the whole body is just a burst of all those great grains and malts in there. It's, it's smoky, but not overly done. You don't have any one flavor that overpowers another. It's very well balanced. Absolutely delicious. All right, guys, the next beer that we're trying here is the Up on Triple Creek Belgian Triple. It's the heaviest beer that they got here at 12.2%. A monster. So let's try it out. It looks very good, a little cloudy, a little dark. It looks delicious to me, so let's try it. See this? This is my hat. The hat's off. This is a delicious beer. First of all, 12.2%, it doesn't taste like that at all. It tastes like apple juice. You're getting apple notes, you're getting caramel notes, you're getting all sorts of good tastes in your mouth, and it goes down smooth. Just no hint of just punch, no hint of getting socked in the stomach with alcohol. This is an amazingly smooth beer. You're getting notes of caramel, notes of apple, notes of banana, notes of all these amazing fruit flavors just coming together in a, such a harmonious way that it doesn't taste like 12.2%. It tastes like an amazing beer that's almost kind of earth shattering. If I had to knock this beer for anything, it's probably the only thing is the texture. It's a little bit thick. It's almost not quite syrupy syrupy, but it's a little syrupy, you know? It's that just like maybe that thickness of Robitussin, so. Now, that being said, it doesn't taste like Robitussin at all. It tastes like an amazing triple that you should try here at Backstreet. Backstreet's back all right. All right, guys, it's time for a food break. James, yeah. Now that we've had some food, we're gonna tackle some more beers. And the next one up is a doozy. It's called the Holy Shiz Imperial Red Ale. It measures in at 10.2%, and it has got the most beautiful red color to it. I'm really excited to try it, but I'm a little afraid at 10.2. We'll see how it goes. Oh. It's really good. Oh, it's really good. You can't really tell it's a 10.2. It feels like it's sneaking it in there, like you know something's up, but you can't figure out what it is. 
that that's what I'm getting off this, but it's absolutely delicious. The the malts are just dancing on my taste buds. They're staying there. Like I want to drink more, but I'm still savoring the flavor that's still left over. It's extremely good. All right, so our next beer up is the Rita Red. It clocks in at 6.5%, not as much as the Holy Shiz, but their other red ale that they have here. And a little bit on the same line, a little bit lighter. We'll see how it is. Cheers. Okay, so it's, it's more hoppy than the Holy Shiz, the one that Jeff just tasted. You're getting a lot more, you're still getting those caramel notes, those red ale notes that you're expecting, caramel, a little bit of barley notes. But overall, it, it it's not as refined as the Holy Shiz. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just, it seems a little bit rougher around the edges. It's more, more of a red ale that you'd expect than the Holy Shiz, which is more bolder, more refined almost. But this is still a great drinking beer. It's still getting those great notes, a little bit of hoppiness, a lot of barley, and it's overall a very good drink. I can't complain. So the next on the list is Set Sail IPA. I love my IPAs and at 7% it's right in the pocket that I love. So Set Sail makes me think about smooth and chill. So we'll see how this actually hits the palate. Cheers. Wow. Oh. That is so good. There's something about the hops that they're using in this or the water. I'm not sure. But think like the Fiji water of IPAs. That's what this reminds me of. It's smooth. The texture is velvety. It just feels so good on the palate. It's not overly hoppy, but packed with flavor. This thing from start to finish, I can still taste it on my palate from start to finish, is fantastic. It's not the type of IPA that's gonna blow your palate out. It's the kind that just gives you a nice, long, warm hug. And that's what I like in a good IPA. I want it that way. All right, so the next beer that we're gonna do here is the Tomahawk Double IPA. It comes in at 9.2% and their third heaviest beer here. So in Jeff's effort to try to kill me, he's having me try the first and the third strongest beer here. This one coming in at 9.2. Cheers. Wow. Okay, so like I said, I don't know what kind of magic Backstreet has in those fermentation tanks, but this doesn't taste like 9.2%. I don't know with the Belgian triple, with this, if they're just lying to me or if they have magic, magic fairies working in the back, but you're not getting that big punch of alcohol that you're expecting from these high alcohol beers. I don't know what it is, but you're getting a lot of barley, you're getting decent hops, and you're getting a very just drinkable taste. Not as drinkable as, you know, say a Pilsner. It's a very drinkable beer you could have two or three of very easily and lose track of how many you've had exactly, because this can be very dangerous, but it's very, very good. All right, so the next beer we're gonna do here is the Jagged Little Pilsner. It's 5.3%. You know, your, your normal baseline Pilsner, I'm expecting, but it looks good, cheers. It's a tasty Pilsner. It's a real, real tasty Pilsner. It's very drinkable, very light, getting a little bit of body, not overly so, not a lot of hops, but it's, it's a very ironic beer that you're thinking that it's, they're saying a little Pilsner, but it has, has very, very big flavors. I want you to know that it's just very, very good. Bottom line. It's not uninvited. It's not, it's something that you would want at your home all the time. It's not uninvited. The last and final beer on the menu tonight is their Raspberry Sour. This measures in at 4%. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not a huge sour fan, but I figured I would give it a try anyways. So, cheers. Let's see how this tastes. Wow. Backstreet. Quit playing games with my heart. 
This is actually really, really good. Thing I don't like about sours most of the time is overly tart, overly packed with fruit, or they have that slight vinegar taste based on some of the yeast strains that they use and some of the processing that they do with their sours. This actually, more than anything, actually tastes more like a raspberry flavored Pilsner. Uh, it's not overpowered. I would say if you're a fan of cider beers, this you would love. You would absolutely love it at 4%. You can kind of drink a few of these guilt-free. Hey Jeff, what's your favorite beer tonight? So if I had to pick a favorite beer, it's really, really close. I love that stout. The stout was delicious. But at the end of the day, I'm an IPA guy. I decided on the Set Sail IPA. It just, it's like a beer arrow shot straight through my heart. It's exactly what I want in an IPA. It's got a beautiful body. It's got a clean finish, just the right amount of hops. And then it's got that little special something and I, I still can't put my finger on it. For those of you who are afraid of trying IPAs, I just want you to know that this Set Sail IPA is a great way to start on IPAs. It is fantastic. There is so much flavor coming out of this. It is an awesome intro beer. In fact, I mean, you can see after trying several beers, this is absolutely my favorite. So, cheers. All right, Justin, it's your turn. Which beer did you try tonight that was your absolute favorite? Mm. So many good beers that we had here, but the one, the one that has the call to my heart, it's gotta be the Belgian Triple, man. Even though it's the most, most heaviest in alcohol here, it didn't taste like it. It had the most complex flavors, it had the most complex aroma, everything that you're looking for in a great beer, a great, something you can just sip on for hours and hours. This Belgian Triple has it. It's the one that's showing me my heart. I'm drowning in this stuff because I love it so much. All right, Backstreet Brewing, you are larger than life. Thank you for the great beers. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Let's Have Some Beer.